Welcome to Sky Intern uh, from your your Freedom Trading Lab team. Uh, we'd like to go over the uh, settings for the Sky Intern real quick. Um, to begin, we're going to start with login, email address. What we need to put in here is we need to specifically put in the email address in which you purchased the bot, whether it was the Freedom Bot or the Sky Intern Bot. So whatever it is, that whatever the email address was that that you should have received instructions on how to how to uh, how to get a, get that bot how whether to download it or a members area or whatever whatever email address it is that was used to to purchase the bot that is the email address that you need to um, put in here um, if for some reason you're putting it in there and it does not work right it does not work either you do, you forgot or you're not sure or whatever please feel free to email support at freedom trading lab dot com support at freedomtradinglab.com and ask them to double check your email address um, in which you purchased the bot for. Um, a couple of things, a little admin notes to, to mention about this. Um, this, is, this is yours. Um, if for some reason you give the Sky Intern and or your email address to someone else, uh, one of you will not work. It, only one will work at any given time per IP address. Okay, so just to just to kind of uh, give you some some insight on how that works. Entry configs, risk and percentage. So every trader risks anywhere from one to five percent, uh, one to five percent per trade per pair of their account balance on a very particular trade. So one is being very conservative, five being is 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 fairly risky. Um, three is being just in the middle. Uh, any more than five is, you know, it's, it's super risky. But you know, and again, it's your money, and and uh, you are more than welcome to do so. In any case, what you need to do is you need to put the type of risk um, person that you are. In this case, you know, if you want to do one percent, just simply type one. If you want to do three percent, do three point zero, and that will give you three percent. So what happens is, is when it receives a trade, when it receives a trade. <clears throat> Uh, signal, um, it will calculate the total risk percentage or <coughs> excuse me, the lot total lots size for that particular that particular pair. All right, three percent against whatever balance you have um, using the stop loss that is in the signal, and it's going to calculate your overall lot size for that signal. Okay, that's what the uh, risk in percentage is going to do. Use all tick profits. When this is set to true, if however many tick profits are in that signal, it will place those amount of orders. So if you get a signal that has three tick profits, it will set, it will use all three of those and create orders for each individual tick profit level. Lots for TP one, two, three in percentage. In this setting, when it when this is set to true and it creates those three different orders, what it's going to do, it's going to allocate 50%. It's going to take 50% of the overall lot size, right? This is the risk percentage now. So this is not lots. This is risk percentage. But it when it when it calculates the risk percentage, it's going to give you the total lot size. It's going to take 50% of that lot size and it's going to apply it to the TP1 order. It's going to take 25% of the lot size and it's going to apply that to the TP2 order. It's going to take 25% and apply it to the three, uh, TP3 order. So here's some rules of thumb. First, well, actually, this is uh, completely customizable to you. You can change these numbers any way you want, uh, with with some exception. Uh, the first rule is, is that they must equal 100%. All right. Um, the second rule is that uh, any one of these three fields cannot be a zero. It must be a, at least a one. So in this case, if you wanted to set this for 75, and then this one for 24, and this one for one, as long as it equals to 100%, that's good to go. What that would mean is that you're putting 75% of the lot sizes on TP1, 24% of the lot size on TP2, and only 1% on TP3. 
Uh, so those, that's for really for those folks who are really concentrating on the first two lots, uh, first two um, take profits. Um, but this is the only way that you can do that, which is which is again, it's not it's not bad. Um, even if you have one percent on that TP3 order, if by some chance it ends up going to TP3, then that's bonus pips. If it doesn't and it comes and stops out, you're still going to end up closing that at the second one at really 25% uh, if you really think about it. But again, like I said, this is completely customizable to you. Just make sure you put a number, a comma, a number, a comma, and a number. Signal filters. Traders to include or add minus to exclude. So in this setting right here, um, you are, have the ability to include or exclude traders. So if you have a trader that is not having a great win percentage and you don't want to take that person's trades, then you can exclude them. So a couple things. Number one, when there's no names in here, uh, it will include, it will, it, uh, Sky Intern will review every single trader's um, um, signals and place trades if they are valid trades. So if, they, if you have five master traders, if you have ten master traders, if there's no names in here, it will look at all master traders and place trades as long as they're valid trades. If you put one very specific person's number, so we're going to put uh, uh, trade killer. If we put trade killer, let's say that's the person's name with no minus sign, what this is going to do is Sky Intern will accept only trade killers email alerts. Only trade killers email alerts. Everyone else will be automatically automatically excluded. Okay? And if you only wanted to ex receive two individuals, simply put a comma and then the next person's name, we'll put uh, trade hunter. All right? We'll do that. Trade hunter. Um, with no minus sign, and then now Sky Intern will accept only these two traders. Okay? Or because the list is typically smaller to exclude, if you want to exclude a specific trader, you do the minus sign and uh, um, not a good trader. So, how this works will Sky Intern will accept everyone else's signals except for not a good trader because you put the minus sign in there. It will accept everyone else's trades, every, all the other master traders except for except for not a good trader. Okay. If you have another person that you want to add in there, you're going to put a comma after that name, a space, a minus sign, and another bad one. All right, whatever that person's name is. So now again, Sky Intern will, will accept, will look, will place trades for every other trader except for these two individuals. All right. A couple of things to note is you make you have to make sure that you spell the name out correctly. Otherwise, the Sky Intern will not recognize it. It will only recognize it will only follow the direction per what you what you say. It cannot it cannot assume what you mean, only what you say or what you typed. So that is how you include or exclude traders. Skip sing signals, excuse me, skip symbols with open orders. This being set to false. If you if Sky Intern is currently has a trade that it is managing for a pair and it receives a another trade alert from from either another trader or whatever for the same pair by setting it to false, it will not skip it. It it will place that trade if all other um, if all other settings are valid. All right. If it's set for true, then it will skip any other one until until that other trade is closed. All right. So again, you have an option to turn that off and accept as many trades as you want. However, by doing so, you're actually um, going against the rule of placing only a certain percentage per pair or per trade per pair. So be very careful with that. If you place, if it places two trades um, for uh, USD JPY 
and those two separate trades are both at 3% risk, that inherently makes your total risk 6%. So understand that. Margin level to stop trading. This setting was created to, to, uh, to help those predominantly that with smaller accounts, but it's still easy to, to margin out. You do not know what margin out means. Please feel free to go and research it on YouTube or in your, you know, whatever education system that you're currently using. Um, but typically, when it, when your account gets to 100% or less, the broker, the broker, will close the largest trade that you have in a loss that is losing. They will close that out and re to recoup their money before your your account actually gets blown. So. Uh, you have the capabilities of changing this to whatever percentage that you want. So if you want to set it at 200%, you can. If you want to set it at 500%, you can. Well, what, how this will work is uh, Sky Intern will no longer take any trades if your margin percentage is, is at 200% or less. So Sky Intern will not take any trades if it is 200% or less. Currently, the default is 110 um, and again, you can change it for whatever you want. Entry price, tolerance, in pips. This, folks, is important. This one has to do with margin, uh, market execution trades. Okay. If it's a trader sends out a market execution trade, inherently it means once you get that signal, you need to get into that trade right then and there. Sky Intern, when it receives this trade, <clears throat> if it's within five pips of the entry price, then the Sky Intern will accept that trade and place that trade at whatever that pip, wherever it is in the market price. If it is outside of that five pip range, it will not place that trade. And that is to protect you and your account. With that being said, it's important to understand how this works. Emails can take various lengths of time to get to you. Not everyone gets an email at the exact same time across the planet. If there are 20, 30, 40,000 people that are receiving this trade uh, signal, again, each of those people will get it at various different times. There are all kinds of environmental factors that, that could cause you to not get this email at the exact same time. In fact, some emails could take 10, 20, 30 minutes. It just depends. Your power could go out. Obviously, you're not going to get the email until your power comes back on. Um, the the internet provider could go down. You know, one of their telephone lines can go down, losing internet connectivity. Your router could go down. There are so many different factors that prevent you from getting the email at the exact same time that the trader sends it out. With that being said, folks, let's assume for an example that you do not get this email signal for 20 minutes. Two or three weeks ago, G, uh, GBP Odd moved in, uh, it activated and hit a 50 pip stop loss in less than three minutes. The market can move extremely quickly depending on what session it's in, all kinds of different factors. So, with this scenario, folks, let's say you get this email 20 minutes later. In that 20 minutes' time, the market had moved 100 pips in profit. Okay? Now, if the Sky Intern was following your orders to do a market execution, then technically it should get in right it there at 100 pips in profit. Now, you have not taken that profit. It has just moved 100 pips. Okay. The other piece of information the Sky Intern understands is the stop loss the trader gave you, which is now 150 pips difference, 150 pips back, assuming that it was a 50 pip stop loss. So. If you if Sky Intern just got in on that market execution without any rules, and all of a sudden that market reversed, you would take a loss of not 50 pips, folks. You would take a loss of 150 pips. And your initial entry, your risk, was only 450. So you would lose three times that amount of money. So this is important to understand. Okay? So the protection is that if it's within five pips of the market execution price, then it will take it. 
If it's not, then it won't take it to protect you. Now you can completely change this. You can make it 10 pips, 15 pips, 20 pips, whatever. But here's what you need to understand, folks. This right here is not calculated as part of your risk percentage. It is not calculated as part of your risk percentage. So if your stop loss is actually 50, right, if it was calculated using 50, if, you, if it hits, if it uses any amount of this, you're going to need to add that to that 50, which wasn't calculated in the first place. So if you hit stop loss, if it comes in at the fifth, five pips away, you're actually now, if it goes into a hit stop loss, it will actually be a, take a loss for 55 pips. If you set this to 10 and it came in at that 10th pip, then you're going to take a loss for 60 pips. But remember, it was only calculated for 50. So be very understandable of, of this. So you either ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth it to take it outside? You know, the, the goal is to try to catch that trade, obviously, but if you know if it if it goes for a loss, you're gonna lose a lot more. So um, this is by default five pips, but again, completely customizable by you. So if you if you get an, an error that says that it missed it because of entry price, this is why it hit outside of that five pip or whatever your limit was. That's why it's gonna give you that um, that error alert. Signal delay tolerance in hours. Sky intern, because this is set for one, will look within um, one hour for new, one hour behind for new trade alerts. As again, as an example, if your power went out, like, and it was out for 30 minutes, and it comes back on, and the sky intern is set up, it's going to look back one hour, and and if there's a trade that has not been activated, and you know, it, it sees that, it'll place that trade. So extremely important to not go to not, not go further back than that because if you put two or three or four or five hours, it, it has a potential to open up old trades that have already made major moves and that is that would not be a good thing. So the default is one hour, folks, and it's highly encouraged, highly recommended that you re keep it at one hour. Break even configs. Break even level and percentage based on TP1 to entry price. So in this setting right here, <clears throat> this is where we, we start talking about breaking even. So a lot of times when um, master traders, they'll send a notice that says, hey, we've hit so many so many pips. Go ahead and <clears throat> take partial profit and move your, your break uh, stop loss to break even. So in this instance, now this is you are in complete control of that part. So when a, tra a master trader does that, it's for the people who are doing manual trades, manually doing it, and they, they're just giving it as a recommendation, not an order or anything like that. They're giving it a recommendation to go ahead. It, it'd be a good time to close and move stop loss. In this instance, <clears throat> in, in that instance, uh, SkyInter does not listen to those trades, all right, those updates. It does not. It follows what you're telling it to do. So the first one we want to mention is the break-even percentage. So when it gets 90% of the way before it hits TP, and um, then it's going to move your stop loss to break even, and uh, it's going to move your. It, that's when it's going to move your stop loss to break even. Okay. Again, this is completely customizable. You can do 75%. Um, if you're if you like the fact uh, when the master traders do them they typically do them at the 50% mark you can have it set for that it's completely up to you okay it's completely up to you but the default is 90% break even add pips the next setting is when it does move to break even when it gets to 90% of the way it's going to move the stop loss to break even but when it does it's going to add this many pips to it, all right? Again, completely customizable. You can do two pips. You can do zero, all right? It's, again, completely up to you, um, but the default is five. Partial close configs. Lots to close in percentage. In this setting, we have 50%. So 
this, this works in conjunction with break even configs, these two, these, uh, these ones up here. So when you combine all three of these together, when it hits 90% of the way between entry price and the TP1, it's going to move it to break even. It's going to add five pips. And when it does that, it's going to go, it's going to close 50% of the lot sizes for all three orders for or for all the orders that are going in that direction okay so 50 percent so 90 percent when it gets to 90 percent of the way it's going to move it to break even it's going to add this many pips and it's going to close that much profit down again completely customizable you can put 25 percent 75 percent 90 percent whatever it is you want 10 percent and then you can let the rest ride it's completely up to you completely customizable and it's also completely customizable uh, customizable when you want to do it all right so using these three combination here has everything to do with that first um, partial profit um, taking time stop loss configs stop loss add pips this option right here allows you to add pips to whatever the stop loss is so if the master trader sends out the trade information you get a uh, um, and and Sky Intern sees it and let's say it's a 50 pip stop loss, a 50 pip stop loss. You can maybe let's say you want to give it a little bit more breathing room than what they would. You know maybe the market movers, the market movers might you know they they might have placed the traders might have placed the stop loss right just outside of where they think it would stop out. Well, you can also add pips to that. So if the original stop loss was 50, 50 pips, well, you can add more pips here. Like, let's say I want to add five more pips to it just to give it a little bit more breathing room. Um, so what it's going to do as well is it's going to add this, this five pips to the original 50, and it should um, adjust your risk. When it calculates the risk, it's going to um, add that into the risk factor. Okay, it's going to add that into the risk factor. But the default is zero. Allow trailing stop. So this is critical, folks. This is if when it sets a true, it will allow the options to do the trailing stop and the fractal, the fractal pip, uh, the fractal trailing. Okay, these are the two trailing. When this is set to true, then it will it will use the trails that are that are for each of these charts, and we'll get to that in just a second. If it's set to false, there will be no trailing. The stop loss will not move, except for this very first time right here at the top. It will not move any more than that, okay? Until it gets to its respective TP ones or or uh, take profits. Excuse me. Trailing stop trigger in percentage. So when this is set to true, the trailing stop will begin to, to trail, right? whether it's 20 pips or whether it's doing the fractal trailing. It will begin to, to trail at the 90% mark. The 90% mark come, is between entry price and TP1, just like this setting here. All right, so that's when the trailing stop will begin. And again, completely customizable. If you want the trailing stop, stop uh, to start at 50%, you can. Uh, if you want it to start when it hits TP1, you can, 100%, or even later after that, okay? But the default is 90%. Exit data for trailing. So in this one here, we have time frame uh, trailing stop. So what this is basically saying that if there is a trade, right, that was called on these charts, the one minute, five minute, 15, 30, one hour, four hour, if you had a trade and the master trader called that trade on any of these charts, then on these charts, if you are allowing the trailing stop, it is going to use a 20 pip trailing stop, okay? And again, completely customizable. You can change the 25, 30, 10, whatever it is you want. Um, but again, completely customizable and it is defaulted to 20. Exit data for fractals. Time frame fractals, fractals trailing stop. 
Um, in this instance, for the for any trades that are called on the daily, weekly, or monthly, um, it will use the uh, fractal trailing, right? Fractal trailing, and um, it will also use a fractal uh, pip gap of five. All right, so super critical. If you don't know anything about uh, fractal trailing, um, you know, feel free to YouTube it. Um, and or, or visit your your local uh, education line but this is where you get to change um, it's where you get to change the information to correspond uh, um, appropriately but this these are the current settings for the fractal pip gap or the fra and the fractal trailing stop broker information suffix a symbol prefix and symbol suffix. So in the instances of those brokers that use uh, various uh, characters at the end of a pair, all right, uh, a lot of times these bots have a difficulty in, in uh, making those trades. For instance, trader's way um, and turn key FX. They both use a, a, uh, a character at the end of their pairs. So for instance, if you had uh, GBP USD, ter uh, Trader's Way would put the small letter I after that. Okay. Now <clears throat> for Trader's Way and Turnkey, uh, Turnkey FX, aka also known as FinPro, those two, those two brokers have already been uh, corrected within the software. So you do not need to put the suffix or or prefix or but definitely the suffix. You do not need to put the for those two brokers. However, for any other broker that is not those two, you still need to if if they have additional characters, you need to add them in here for it to convert over to the proper trading um, uh, format. All right. So there's another company out there called Forex uh, CT, I believe it is, and they use a period at the end of their pairs. Another one uses a, an underscore, like an underscore dash. Uh, another one uses a lowercase e. So there's a bunch of different ones out there that might, they're more rare than anything, but there's still some that are out there that use those. If you do not, if you, if your broker is anybody but Trader's Way and Turnkey, Pro, or Turnkey FX, then you need to put the characters that those brokers use in these two positions. Signal configurations. So this is where we're actually going to configure um, where um, all the information that we get from our signal provider. Okay, in in here our source of signals we're basically pulling it from Gmail. Um, you could also get it from Telegram. There's other signal providers out there that that send in various methods, and um, there will be more options available. Uh, once, once more of the signal providers, you know, are brought on board, or, or, or uh, that we're identified of what they what, what is required to uh, use them with this, with the Sky Intern. Um, it's going to read HTML tags, and there's a couple other options that'll be used for, for the future. But here are the primary ones, going from subject to read all the way down to patterns. So this needs to be identical to whatever the signal provider says to you. So whatever the subject line is says, then you need to predominantly put, you know, the, the, whatever the correct subject is. Um, <clears throat> the the next one, and and so these ones right here, these are the are um, the left side of the column of the email. For instance, if if you receive a, sig a, uh, a signal from a provider, everything to the right of this column that is that is spelt out symbol, right? Everything to the right is going to identify the symbol. But your provider might say SYM instead of symbol. So it needs to be exactly as your provider provides it to you. All right? Here's another example. This one could be is time frame whatever the time frame the master trader is using however you know some of them are time and then space frame so it has to be exactly as it is in the email this one is another example you could have order space uh, type 
and then something, you know, a slash, and then something else. Basically saying, whatever is to the right of this, that's what your order type is going to be. So that's how it's going to read it. Okay. Some providers might, instead of putting entry price one, might put EP one. And then to the right of that will be whatever that value is. But what you're saying, what you're telling Sky Intern to do is everything of the right of this is going to be EP1. Or of the right of this is going to be entry price one. Okay? So it needs to be very specific to however the signal is given to you, it's sent to you. Um, and it's going to go all the way down to trader and uh, for pattern of others. A lot of the times, only it, this is the uh, comments section of a trade, um, something to that effect. All right. But the key things to remember, guys, is that this has to be the same as at whatever your signal providers are sending you. Other settings. In this section, we have status message color. And um, so basically what this is, is when you apply the, the bot to the chart, okay, you can change the colors to, to make it easier for you to see. You can tailor the colors so you can see all the writing on there. By default, when it's set to none, it's going to be in white or it's going to be the opposite of whatever the background color is. So if your background of your chart is black, it should put these as white, the, whatever the, the lettering. If, your, um, if the background is white, it should make your coloring black. However, you can also choose to make it whatever color that you want. All right. The next thing is send alerts to email. So when you are setting up your SMTP, right? SMTP, when you are setting it up or when it was being set up, um, it has the ability to send you an alert that if Sky Intern for some reason fails or turns off or gets shut down, that, a, that an alert will be sent to your email. So as long as that information is in the SMTP is correct and this is set to true, if something happens to Sky Intern, it will, it will alert you by sending an email. The next one is sending alerts to your MT, MT4 app. So during the installation process, you should have been asked um, if you wanted to send notifications. It has the ability to send notifications to your MT4. This is a super cool tool. Um, it, 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 uh, there is a, an ID that everybody's individual MT4 has that you have to um, sync up with MT4 on the computer. And anytime something happens to um, Sky Intern, so if it places a trade, if a trade activates, if, uh, if, it, if you take partial profit, if it takes TP1, 2, or 3, if it uh, if it stops out, if you got, if it deletes or closes, you will get an alert to include if something happens with Sky Intern. But in order to get those, you have to not only set up that section of the setup, right, notification setup. You also have to turn this to true as well. Warning: Change below at your own risk. So this section of the settings, all right, is again you don't want to you don't want to change these. You don't want to mess with these or or you're risking the bot not functioning correctly. Um, the first one is lines of logs to show. So on your screen where you have Gmail reader status, you have about seven lines of, of information of, of it cycling back and forth checking emails. So the default right now is seven lines. In this instance, you can change it, all right? If you don't wanna see it at all, you can put it to zero. If you wanna see less of it, you can change it. Let's say four, whatever. But the default is seven. Um, you can change that without having a major effect to the operation of the bot. All right. Enable detailed logging is is a an advanced uh, way of keeping track of what's going on inside of your Sky Intern, and it's predominantly used for troubleshooting for your for your customer support folks. So you'll be guided to turn that on um, and see a log of a of a, of a ton of information, so that it can be used for uh, further troubleshooting. You do not want to leave this on true because it continuously logs every single thing that happens to Sky Intern and MT4, and the file can get quite large if you leave it on. So please make sure that if you're told to turn this on um, by customer support, that you follow the directions and only turn it on for a certain amount of time.
do, but when it comes to slippage and the magic number, you, you do not, absolutely do not, do not, do not change any of these numbers or it will, it will uh, highly affect the operation of the Sky Intern. So please do not change any of these, uh, any of these numbers. And lastly, while it's not part of the settings itself, the actual settings, it still has to do with the settings. So in this instance, there's a lot of typing involved, and there's a lot of information that you will change throughout the course of this. And so it's to prevent you from having to type this up again, what you want to do is you want to save, you want to save all those presets. And typically you can save it under whatever you want to call it. So you can call it my defaults. All right, or give it some kind of strategy name, however you want to do it. What you're going to do, it's going to save whatever your, your, your settings are that you have changed. The reason why you do that is because every time you apply the Sky Intern um, settings from scratch, it's going to default as blank. Whatever you see right here, there will be no email address here. This will be set back to one if you had changed it. If you add excluded um, traders, that it will be blank, etc., etc. All of these fields right here will be blank. So what you do is you come over here and click load, and then click my defaults and click open, and then it will pre, it will fill back all the ones that you currently had saved. Once that's done, you click OK, and that is it. The settings are now applied to the chart. That concludes the settings portion of the Sky Intern. Um, please feel free to, to continue to, to, to really study over and create your own trading style and watch for other strategies and tips and tricks in the Sky Intern Command Center um, that we will post um, every, every now and again to try to give you an idea of how you can really use this um, to, diff to uh, apply to different strategies.